You're with Newsmakers on the panel, Peter Townsend, Joe Kane and Sir Kerry Burke. The latest NCEA figures underscore the widening gap in gender-based performance in Canterbury, although girls outshone boys across all levels of NCEA. In the Level 3, the gender gulf is the most gaping. 78% of Canterbury girls achieved Level 3, compared to 63% of boys. Um, do you believe this adds fuel to the argument that we should be extending the provision of single-sex schooling. What do we think? Mrs Kane? Absolutely not. No. Uh, I can never understand why we kind of, at that real time when both male and female hormones are raging, we separate them. And I went to an all-girls school and I spent most of my time trying to get to the boys' school, <laughs> the bottom of the Basin Reserve. And I, I guess, but I, I looked at it and thought that anything that will lift, you know, the male's academic performance to that of a woman's, you know, would be a remarkable achievement. Mm. So, you know, whatever you guys need to actually lift it, you know, you bring it on. But I, I, I've always thought it's weird that we seem to think that we take the male and, and female, we separate them into these uh, schools and that's that's good. My son went to a single seat school and I have to say that some of his social interaction at that time going on is not the greatest and I've seen that in a lot of the boys that come from those schools. All right, so cool. I don't think it's a good thing. Well, Quick comment. Yeah, I, you know, I'm a product of uh, um, co-ed school, primary, oh, high school, well, university and, and the Did like. And so, <laughs> and so I, I, uh, I, uh, I, 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 if we all tend to consider what was best as, as the system we went through. But yeah, I'm, I, uh, I, I fully support the parents' right to be able to, to go to single-sex schools if that's what suits them best. Uh, I think boys are um, more, stri more uh, challenged uh, as they move through adolescent years uh, than girls, and maybe they'll catch up later on, but uh, maybe the girls are just working harder. But preserve those rights for parents to, uh, to choose uh, okay. you know, a single-sex school if they want. Peter, on the wider subject of young people and assisting young people who perhaps are lacking direction in their lives, um, I understand you are the patron of the current intake in the LSV scheme at Burnham. Uh, and I think they're graduating, aren't they? Is it this yes, tomorrow. weekend? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Your impressions of that scheme and, and the youngsters? Great. Just before I say that, can yep. I say that I think the fundamental difference between boys and girls is that girls learn to learn earlier than boys. I didn't learn to yeah. learn until I left secondary school. Right. And I think that's a critical issue that we don't give enough cognizance of. It was a single sex school, yeah. Rotorua Boys High School. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, with the limited service volunteers, stunning. Look, I, I just want to dispel this whole illusion that we're dealing with boot camps with these 130 young people who are out at Burnham. I've been watching them over the last six weeks. The transformation they have gone through, and a lot of these people come from disadvantaged backgrounds. All of them haven't been able to get to work. They're all registered unemployed. Um, some of them have been in trouble in the past. Mm. The transformation that they've gone through is just stunning. And anyone who <coughs> doubts the, um, the outcomes that we're going to get from those sorts of life skill camps should go out and have a look. Uh, not boot camps. They must not be described as boot camps. That is denigrating what is an extraordinarily valuable and beneficial service to people in our community that need it. I'm going out there tomorrow to speak at the graduation parade and I'm really looking forward to seeing these young people line up and be proud with a, with a lot more self-esteem than they had when they started, mm. with much more focus on where they want to go. It's a fantastic program. Good stuff. All right, and all the best to them. Um, just a quickie on Easter trading. It's one of the great perennial New Zealand debates, isn't it, after a languid holiday over Easter? Uh, what to do with the Easter trading laws? What do we think? Kerry? Well, I mean, I, I agree that um, it, there's a shambolic situation out there. Uh, to be frank, uh, the government or parliament and or parliament needs to act. It needs to make its mind up. It's one thing or t'other. You can't just have in a, uh, in a uh, society which is underpinned by law, save for Environment Canterbury, uh, uh, <laughs> you, you can't have um, serious business corporations saying to hell with the law, we're going yeah. to do what uh, the law does not permit us to do, and then to have the authorities not enforcing the law. So you've either got, got to fix the law, or one way or the other. Yeah. Should we leave it entirely up to the retailer to choose? No. No. Oh. Have we forgotten the the forty hour week and and what that forty hour week and how we how we now spread our whole employment over you know twenty four seven mm. and and the, what's that done to families and the way families now are to, what's wrong with closing the shops for three days a year we've still only got the same amount of dollars and I'm the same you know I didn't break the law and I lost my job and there's plenty breaking the law at the weekend and they're still trading. Oh. <coughs> I can feel some urgency. I can feel some urgency. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yes. We've moved on from this issue. I do not move on. I'm not building any bridges. 
A Not moving on till I'm ready. The river runs deep. <laughs> Indeed, oh, absolutely. There's, there's more bloodletting yet, Michael. Oh, more cakes and daggers. Yes, yes. all right. More fun um, for journals. <laughs> very quick comment, Peter. On yeah, the trading. whole thing's a mess and it needs to be cleaned up. I mean, I was intrigued to see that Mitre 10 and Monica opened against the law on over Easter on Easter Sunday and good on them because they had 45,000 people attending the Wanaka Air Show. I mean, how stupid is that? Mm, OK. Um, now, I've got about 60 seconds on the clock for any plugs and pokes from the week that has been. Who deserves a serve or a salute? Uh, think, very quickly. I think MPs who uh, get into difficulty in a private capacity or even as an MP on the street and they go to the Speaker to pay for their uh, legal costs, uh, they deserve a poke. Never happened in my time, as to oh, my no, own no, memory. No. <laughs> Joey. I've got a plug, and I, following on from Peter's, a group of young men that, that are working on a community max scheme at Tutopate Lagoon as part of the Positive Direction Trust. Again, took a ragtag bunch of boys have turned into mm. stunning young men with skills that now can go out to our community and learn to work. And well done okay. to the community max scheme. The trouble with that, that the community max scheme stops. Yeah. And then, then what is the support network around it? But yeah, sure. good plug. All right. Quick Pretty plug from ago. me, the estuary turning blue, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And a poke, the idiots that break trees that have been planted on our street verges just for the hell of it. Mm. I wonder if they're into chess sets as well. Well, the history's mm. improved because of the regional council's consenting process. Oh, there you go. That was the last word from Sakiri on the show. Um, to the pick of the week, and it's a billboard from New York that takes centre stage here. A US congressman is waging war against the low riders. And probably the tree killers <laughs> oh, yeah, as well. Yeah, I'm loving this billboard, and I think yeah. perhaps our fashionista mayor Fashion. should lead a similar campaign to lift standards to stop the sag. Uh, to the newsmakers poll, last week's question Do you support the decision to install politically appointed <gasps> commissioners to govern environment Canterbury? We had a massive response to this poll, by the way. 29% uh, of you said yes, 71% no. Hmm. The prize winner, R. Hughes. Surprise. This surprise. week's <coughs> question Should all Easter retail trading restrictions be abolished? We'll throw it over to you, yes or no. Uh, email newsmakers at ctv.co.nz or via the web or the post. Do so and you'll be in to win the classical opera compilation CD and the Whitcalls gift card. By the way, Whitcalls is hosting Lee Child next week. I think it's Thursday and you can buy tickets from any Whitcalls outlet for his event. Thank you very much to our uh, most interesting panel. And we await some key decisions, do we not? Two sacked, didn't have an employment key. contract, and one that does. No, that, that we were sacked because of a key decision. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Kerry Burke, Peter Townsend and Joe Payne, thank you for your company. Have a fabulous weekend. Good night.